Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Yep, another second channel video, and it's another day. That means another Sony television. I'm gonna take a look at this thing, see if it works. I have no idea. And yep, this is another Trinitron, and it's from 1982 as well. Just look at the aesthetics on this thing. So cool. So this television is the Sony KV-1221R. R standing for remote control, and there it is. It's a much simpler remote than the other Sony TV I recently showed on the channel with a remote, although that remote was dead. And this one, dead as in batteries killed it. If I open the battery compartment of this one, no leakage. So I'd say that this remote is going to work. There we go. Still very worn out though. Most of the chrome paint has come off. So the sort of brownish plastic that was underneath has shone through, but uh, the buttons still feel like maybe they work. We'll see about that if the TV even works. So this TV has unusual proportions where it's very thick along the bottom. I think it would have looked a little bit better if the tuner and the speaker stuff were on the side, making the TV a little bit less tall. But Sony probably had a whole line of TVs at the time with other models in this 12 inch range where the controls were on the side. And like that other Sony TV I looked at, I think it was called the 1222RS. This is a 1221R. So this is probably a slightly earlier version or, but who knows really. That previous TV had a little bit less stuff going on at the bottom, just a small control panel with some controls for the picture and the tuner and stuff was along the top. So there's a little bit of extra on the top, but a lot less on the bottom. And I think that overall just looked better than this one. Down here are the tuner controls. You have 14 silver tuner buttons. And these are similar to the Sony, the first small nine inch Sony I showed on the channel where there are little strips here, which you can pull out, I think. Let's see if we can get this out of here. There we go. You can pull these out and these have all the numbers for your channels on them. Glad that didn't break. Don't know how, how many times I should take that out of there. Uh, let's see if I can get this back in now. There we go. So on this tuner, each one of these channel assignments can be configured to be any channel on the dial two through probably 83 North American system. And then you just move around the little numbers on those strips to represent the actual channels you have programmed. Whoever had this TV never actually did anything with these channel numbers because we have two through eight, nine through 13, which is all the VHF channels in North America, and then two channels with asterisks on them. I'm assuming the original manual came with these little numbers on a sheet, like 28 and other numbers, and you'd pop one out and then pop it into the spot on here that you have tuned to channel 28. There's a speaker right here. There's dual headphone jacks at the bottom here, as is normal for all these Sony TVs. The IR receiver is right there. We have the power button and we have volume up and down. Now, unlike the buttons that were on that first Sony nine inch TV that I had to take out because they were all degraded, these still feel okay when you push on them. Still springy and they feel normal. I'm assuming this is how the buttons were on the, on the little nine inch TV and they stopped working at some point. Down here on the bottom corner, there's a little door you can flip down and you have hue, color, brightness, auto on off, which I am sure is for auto picture or auto color or something. And then there is a picture control here and these knobs are up in the TV. So you just put your finger there and you can move them left and right. So there's the picture control. And of course, as is customary for Sony, they put Trinitron badge right here on the front of the TV. If I turn the TV to its side, check out the cool aesthetics here. No fake wood grain. We have silver paint on plastic with these lines, which don't do anything other than act stylistic on the side here. There is a vent along the bottom to let air into the TV, but otherwise it's just this washboard texture. Turning it to the back, pretty run of the mill stuff here. We have the RF input, UHF on the top, we have VHF on the bottom, so that's nice, an F connector for 75 ohms. There are the usual plethora of controls that you have to poke through the case. 
what is this here, uh, focus, is that screen, and then we have the bias controls for the various electron beams, vertical size, and vertical hold down here. As is customary, it seems that the cable holders on these Sonys seem to survive, like they use good plastic, I guess, and these don't just snap off. So that's pretty cool. There's even a little thing here to hold the plug from just flopping around. Smart design. And actually, the power cord here has a little thing here to you tuck it into like that. There we go. And that holds it from getting caught under one of the feet here. There's a little track underneath the TV that it runs in. This TV was manufactured April 1982. Made in Japan, of course. As was customary with Sony's at the time of this TV, the rabbit ear antennas would slot into this thing here and it had a wire that would go and it would connect up to the RF block. I think there was a little round antenna for UHF and rabbit ears for VHF. And you could obviously remove that, hence the, the reason why they're not on this TV. A lot of people did take them off, throw them away or whatever, when they were using a television like this with cable TV or a VCR or cable converter box, that type of thing. If we turn the TV to the other side, same thing as on the other side we looked at, the washboard stylized plastic case, not anything else to report. Let me tilt the TV forward. So on the top of the TV, we have more grooves for stylistic pleasure. And we have a nice, really chonky, oops, um, carry handle. And it's very, very sturdy feeling and it has sort of detent. So as you put it up, it won't just flop down, it sort of stays up and, and then it will also stay down. So pretty nice. And there is also a little access panel, which we can flip up, oops, and it flips back down. <laughs> These are the tuner controls. There's also a master on off switch. This would need to be in the on position, most certainly for this TV to work. So if you have one of these and it doesn't turn on, make sure you check in here and you push that master on switch. There's a channel clear button here. There are tuning bands to select from, channel set on off and automatic fine tuning on and off. Plus some instructions on here on how to set up the tuner. So the way this works is you pick the channel on the front of the TV, those silver buttons, and then you would tune it into the exact frequency you want. And I think you push channel, to be honest, I don't think you do anything. You probably just close the lid and that does it. It programs that, that button. That's like a preset almost, like a radio preset. You could program every button on the front of this TV to be channel three, for instance, or pushing all those buttons wouldn't do anything at all. It's totally up to you, but it does require a little bit of setup, but that way you're never messing with the fine tuning on the tuner. You just push the button and it's tuned right into the exact frequency that you want every time. So at this point, the question is, does this television work? Because I have no idea. So let's get this power cable unwound from the holder here. And plug it into mains, no booms. And I'm just gonna check that master on is pushed in. And it is, it's down. Here we go, power. <laughs> of course it's, there's audio at least. Turn the volume down. So that button is working. Oh, come on. Ooh, it's waking up slowly. Let me turn off this studio light so we can see the picture a little better. Well, so right off the bat, I am gonna say that the blue gun on the CRT is a little tired, but I am not seeing any color purity issues like I did see on the last Sony TV. And let's just check out where these things are set. Oh, the pots are a little scratchy, but that's understandable. Yeah, in fact, it's kind of all over the place, to be honest, that brightness pot. How about the picture control? Okay, that one is working pretty much as normal. Auto on off. Okay, so let me hook up. Oh, let's just check the tuner here. Definitely these buttons are working. Excellent. Oh, I'm gonna say that these buttons are a little touchy. Like I pushed this one over here and it went over to four. So I don't know, that might've been just a fluke. Okay. Let me hook up an RF source to this thing. I have the VCR sitting here and let's look at a picture. All right, things are looking okay here. Uh, this is a preview to, I think, Mission Impossible playing off VHS. Uh, definitely 
the red gun is too high. It's too hot. Everything is sort of a, a reddish brown tint to it. So that is just like the last 12 inch Sony I had and it's totally fixable as we know. So I think I'm gonna have to pop the back open, put the test pattern on this thing and then I can be, adjust that, adjust those settings. It also seems a little bit contrasty, a little bit more contrasty than I expect. That could be that the pots are dirty. I just need to clean these pots and then I can get that thing adjusted just right. Typical Sony, arrows pointing to all the screws, but how does this come off? Let's see here. Hmm. I am not sure which part comes off. Aha! Okay, interesting. So unlike all the other ones, the top control panel is part of the case. Oh, I see it stays in the TV though. So this top shell doesn't include the controls that are under this little flap here. So I can slide this thing out. There we go. Well, this part of the chassis is pretty yellow there. <laughs> Let's turn this thing. I wonder why that's so yellowed. Like, is there something up here that gets hot? Maybe. So looking around on the inside of this TV, it's very, very similar to the nine inch TV that I worked on. Like the main PCB here has the horizontal drive transistor right here. This is the voltage regulator for the power supply. Very, very similar. The HDAC controls right here uh, mounted on the CRT itself. Judging by the dust in the CRT, it's definitely high hour. Like the flyback transformer here, it's uh, pretty sooty, black with soot. But this is not uh, from a smoker's household, so the TV doesn't smell. It just smells dusty because <laughs> it's old, it's from 1982. But yeah, pretty good shape, really. Just slightly dusty. Nothing else to complain about. The badge for the CRT is right in there. I can't really get the camera on it, but it is a Sony 330LB22. That's the picture tube in this thing. In typical Sony fashion on the PCB, everything's very nicely labeled. This is the M2 board. It is plugged in right now, so I'm not touching anything. But yeah, uh, sections like remote control, channel selection, lots of test points, things like that. This is the tuner down here. It's connected, of course, via uh, these coax connectors, except for the UHF input right there. First, I'm gonna get the pots for the front controls, and nicely, they're, they're right in there. They're actually pretty far away from the front panel, so the, the knobs are here, but the pot's actually right there. So Sony gives you a nice, easy access point for me to squirt them with deoxit. Oh. Do the old back and forth with the deoxid. The brightness one was the most problematic of all of these. So I'll make sure to get that one extra good with the deoxid. Okay, focus and exposure are locked. Uh, this is the color bars coming through the VCR from the pattern generator and I have the color turned all the way down, and you'll notice the sort of brown tint to it. That other TV was a little more on the reddish side. I'd say the green gun is a little stronger on this CRT, but the blue is definitely down quite a bit. So I'm gonna give this thing the old tweak. I'm not gonna really talk through the adjustment because if you wanna see me doing the adjustment on one of these, check out the previous video on the 12 inch Sony that I did where I do adjust the drives and the bias controls for the CRT to bring the color balance back into spec. All right, and the picture is adjusted. It looks really good now. Um, no particular issues. I mean, it, it tuned up just as I thought it would. I'd say that this CRT is pretty much as good as the one in that other one. Like there's lots more headroom on the drive controls, turning up the green and the blue. Red drive is fixed. And unlike that other one, this one doesn't have any of those color purity issues. Like there, that red picture there is just completely perfectly red all the way across. Green, same thing and the blue, same thing again. So 
it goes back to what I was thinking about the other CRT, the 12 inch one, that it has some kind of damage on the shadow mask in the corner there that just makes it impossible to get the, the color purity correct. I put some batteries in the remote control and it does appear to work. So you can change the channel up and down and volume control as well. I can make it quiet and loud. So that works and the power button works. I have figured out there is a fault with this TV though. And watch what happens when I try to turn the TV back on from the remote. It turns on and this immediately turns off. If I push the power button on the front, same thing happens, but if I push and hold it, it kind of double clicks and then it comes on. So there's obviously a fault somewhere in the power supply. Probably one of the caps has gone low value, has like leaked some of its, its goodness out. So I'll need to find that and fix it. So that will be in a future video. But everything else on this TV seems to work well. One thing I did notice though, is that the RF input on this one and also on the nine inch is kind of noisy. I'm on channel four right now from the VCR and there's just a little bit of interference and that's even though I'm connected with 75 ohms. I assumed the problem with the 12 inch was due to the fact that I had hooked up through the 300 ohm, 75 ohm converter, but hooked up to the slightly newer TV, the 1222RS rock solid image on three and four through the same cables from the same VCR and everything. So it's almost like the tuner in this and on the smaller one isn't great at rejecting noise, I guess. If anyone has any thoughts on what's going on with these two TVs, please let me know. But it could also be the difference in tuner. This has a very similar tuner. In fact, it's probably the same exact tuner as in the, the nine inch TV, but that other 12 inch has PLL, totally digital tuning, you know, with channel numbers and stuff. So it is a different tuner, microprocessor controlled. This is the older voltage dial controlled tuner. So it just may not be as good at projecting noise from all of these LED lights and electronics I have in the house here that are not really shielded properly. So that's gonna be it for my little tour of this Sony KV1221R television set. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do, all that stuff. Subscribe to my second channel. Check out my first channel if you haven't already. Patrons, thank you very much for supporting me and comments in the comment section below. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.